All right, everybody, here it is, the moment you've all been waiting for, my final gear list, my gear list video, talking about everything that I'll be carrying with me, not including food, water, and fuel, of course, but everything that I'll be carrying with me to start my Appalachian Trail through hike. Oh boy, we're getting so close, what a time to be alive. So, of course, I've done some pre-videos to this, touching on specific items of gear that I wanted to dive a little bit more specifically into. Uh, but now it is going to be the official through hike gear video. There's been a number of changes to my usual setup, some additions, some subtractions, uh, you know, just revamping things, getting things dialed in properly uh, for the through hike itself. So as I run through each and every single item, of course, I will put a title. I will put the exact weight down below. At the end, I will give you I will give you the most accurate weight that I think everything is from everything that I've calculated. It'll probably be off by a few ounces here or there. One thing I want to touch on real quick, I do carry that front pouch right here where I carry my GoPro, I carry my cell phone, uh, and the camera, the very lightweight camera accessories to go with everything as well, because those are on my person. I will not be including those in my overall base weight itself. However, I have plenty of great things to cover here today. We're going to get right hot. We're going to go ahead and dive right on into it. So grab a, grab a pen and paper, grab a cup of coffee, whatever the case may be, a beer, pull on up. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. I'm so excited. Here we go. Well, all right, everybody, here we go. I got my entire gear set up laid out before you here. Now, there are some items that I will be carrying on my person, and I'll point those out specifically. So, of course, those items will not be counted in my overall base weight, but I will make sure to put the title and weight of all those things anyway. So let's go ahead and get started here. So up top here, of course, will be the backpack Obviously, I got to carry my life with me. I need a backpack to put everything in. The backpack of choice is my beautiful Osprey Exos 48. It is tried and true. I already have quite a few hundred miles on this thing. It is so comfortable. I have plenty of room into it, and that is what I will be taking on my Appalachian Trail through hike. I guess, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start off with my sleep system with the big elephant in the room right in the middle there. Um... <laughs> So that is going to be the REI Magma 10 degree sleeping bag. Uh, I absolutely love it. Super warm, 850 fill down, backpacker magazines, editor's choice. Comes in at only a pound and 14 ounces with the stuff sack included. Uh, really nice and lightweight, very nice and warm as well, especially for going through the Smokies. Love it, love it, love it. Now, of course, in a previous video, I did talk about how that sleeping bag will be getting switched out for another one as the seasons change over and the weather warms up. Uh, so that one will get switched out for the Sea to Summit Spark 2, which is Sea to Summit's ultralight bag, if you want. And then obviously I need to bring a good comfortable sleeping pad with me. The pad of choice that I have here is the brand new Big Agnes Axle Air sleeping pad. It is their insulated model rated down to 15 degrees. I just did a uh, review of this where I was able to take it for an overnighter. So I was able to give you guys a really nice review. Really, really nice pad. Only 12 ounces. So incredibly lightweight, but gives you some really great comfort, really great dimensions. Definitely go ahead and check that thing out. Yes, I will be bringing a camp pillow with me. My former Sea to Summit Eros pillow uh, sprung a leak on me. And so I switched that out for the Nemo uh, Philo Elite pillow. It's 2.8 ounces. Really nice and lightweight, but incredibly comfortable. I love bringing camp pillows with me. I just sleep a little bit better. And now, no, this is not a secondary pad that I'm bringing with me. I'm actually using the stuff sack to the Axle Air to hold my Silk Mummy liner. The stuff sack with the liner is just really small. It's really tight getting it in there. So I wanted something that had a little bit more forgiveness on me, made it a little bit easier. It is still very compressible, obviously. I can squeeze that down into a little nook without any problem. Uh, the silk liner will only be four ounces. With the stuff sack, it's going to be just below four ounces at about 4.7 ounces overall. Really nice and lightweight. The liner is primarily there to keep my sleeping bag clean. And yeah, at about five degrees of extra temperature. 
I think from there should then probably be appropriate to move over to my shelter system. This is my lovely, lovely tent, the tarp tent notch one person. It does set up with trekking pole tents. That's why I have them set up right next to it to the left there. However, I'm carrying trekking poles. I will not include it in my base weight. The weight of the tent is 27 ounces. However, I will also be bringing the Tyvex ground sheet and of course the tent stakes. The weight with everything combined is a pound and 15 ounces. That is tent, that is footprint, that is tent stakes, and that is even the stuff sacks. A pound and 15 ounces. Really nice and lightweight. I love that tent. Very easy to set up. To my left here, uh, dual purpose. Used as trekking poles for during the day, and I use it to set up my tent at night. These are the Lecky Cristallo trekking poles. I honestly have no idea what the weight is on that, and I really don't care because I carry them. Um, they do the job for me. I put quite a few hundred miles on them. I just really like the way they look. Uh, their grip is super comfortable, and Lecky, of course, is just an extremely popular, extremely durable brand. Well, okay, from there, let's move on down to my cook set. Uh, moving on in here, this is the MSR Titanium Titan Kettle. Now, I did make a Reflectix koozie out of it, and I did the same thing for the lid. Uh, inside is just a small microfiber towel that I use to house the gas canister. It keeps it from clacking around. And I have the Seat Summit Long Spoon, great for getting into those backpacker meals. Uh, everything combined with the lid, the towel, the koozie, everything there is sitting at 7 ounces. So pretty nice and lightweight, not too bad. The koozie is really nice and convenient to help cook your food in a very fast and convenient way. Certainly 7 ounces is still lighter weight overall than my previous cook set. Um, so really, really happy with that. Down here, I do have the Sea to Summit X cup sitting there. That's running at 1.4 ounces. Now I use this in a couple different ways. Obviously I use this to have my morning coffee or have a separate drink, but I also use it with my water gear to help scoop out just in case if it's a really shallow source or if it's just a drip, so on and so forth. Something really nice and versatile for me. I usually keep it with my water filter during the day. And then, of course, I got to cook my food. This is the MSR Pocket Rocket. This is the original Pocket Rocket model, not the brand new model. So with the with the case, it's sitting at four ounces even. Still very nice and lightweight. I've had no problems with it. It didn't make any sense for me to buy the brand new one to only have, you know, like a half ounce weight savings pretty much um, for something that's pretty much going to have the same exact output. So I love it. It's worked well for me. It'll get the job done. The stuff mesh stuff sack down below actually houses everything that you see there nice and comfortably uh, and puts it right down in my backpack with, with a lot of ease. This is always a big point of interest among through hikers to see what they all carry. The tried and true has been the Sawyer Squeeze for years and years. You can screw it right on top of the water bottles, be good to go with it. But when I get to camp, I do like to drink a lot of water and so therefore Having some uh, water storage availability is definitely something that's important to me. Secondly, from there, uh, just ease of filtering, which also was something very important to me. I've done the squeeze filters before. I've done the pump action filters. Uh, it can get to be kind of tedious and kind of a pain in the butt after a while. So I have the Platypus 4-liter water system here. Um, I'm carrying the short end, which connects into the dirty water bag and the filter. Fernando himself is carrying the clean water bag and then the long hose with the Sawyer squeeze filter. So if we decide to spend a day or two on our own, we can still filter water without a problem. The filter and hose and everything combined set is only sitting at just over five ounces. It's like just under five and a half ounces essentially. So I do actually lose a little bit of weight by splitting that up with Fernando. And yet I'm still able to filter water if I do venture out on my own. Of course, going with the smart water bottles, these are actually the 24 ounce, not the full liter model. I don't drink a whole lot of water when I actually hike during the day. Um, when I actually stop, and, I, and refill on water, I tend to drink quite a lot then and also at camp. So I'm always rehydrating around my hikes and not necessarily during my hikes. Now, certainly hot summer months, I can always fill up the water bag and carry a little extra water 
if it is a dry spell. Um, and I know there's not going to be water in that area. So that does still give me that flexibility there. And now on to everybody's favorite, of course. And of course, I joke, uh, toiletries. This is something that is very specific per person, depending on your own needs, your own comfort level. This, this is something that works well for me. Uh, it's very nice and simple, but I think it'll get the job done. There's obviously a couple little additions to this that I will be taking on my through hike that I typically do not take on my smaller section hikes. Now, I guess let me start off in the top left here. Up top there, I will be bringing along with me the Deuce of Space Trowels at only 0.6 ounces. It's something that's very nice and lightweight, but it does make uh, digging your cat holes much, much easier. Down below that, I have about three small pack towels. All are very incredibly lightweight, quick drying, uh, whether it be for cleaning up myself, if I have to wipe down my tent, uh, cleaning up after I eat, so on and so forth. I have a few options there. Uh, do the job, lightweight, simple, so on and so forth. Over to the right here, I do have uh, a toiletry case that I'll be housing everything in. This is the REI small toiletry case. Obviously, I got a bag of TP sitting up on top there. I took the cardboard roll out. Now, I will be bringing these things along with me as opposed to wet wipes, and that's because during freezing temperatures, obviously, wet wipes can freeze. Now, these are little wet wipes that have been dried out and squeezed into tablet form. So you add a couple droplets of water, they expand, uh, they have soap already built into it, of course, and they're fully biodegradable, so they're nice and eco-friendly. So I have about 25 sitting in there. It only weighs a couple ounces to bring 25, but it's good to have wet wipes with you and bring wet wipes that won't be able to freeze on you as well and be biodegradable and eco-friendly are very, very nice. And then, of course, regular odds and ends. I have my toothbrush that I cut about a third the length off, so I still have a good handle on there, but it takes some of the weight, uh, takes some of the size down to make it easier to throw in my uh, toiletry bag. Uh, I have just a small little roll of Tums just in case. Obviously, you're eating tons of protein, just tons of crap food as well. So Tums will be good to settle my stomach in case I come across some food that doesn't, doesn't agree with me. You're a small bottle of Purell. Can't say anything more about that. Uh, a small travel size bottle of Colgate toothbrush, toothpaste, so on and so forth. Uh, over here, I just have a small needle dug into this little, little thing, whatever it is. It prevents it from poking around and poking other things. Inside a little tiny Ziploc, I have some uh, floss up top that can be dual purpose for thread as well, of course, keeping my teeth nice and clean. Coming on down here, I have little bitty nail clippers. Of course, got to keep your feet right. Got to take care of your feet, whatever you do. I have a small pair of um, tweezers sitting here, whether it be pulling ticks, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, a little bit of Motrin, not too many. I think enough for an entire month, just 30 days. That's all I'm bringing, just Motrin. I'm not bringing a whole lot of ibuprofen. I'm just bringing Motrin with me. A little bit of Body Glide. Need I say more? and a tiny, tiny little bit of suntan lotion. Obviously, we're still during winter, but going through the Smokies at that elevation, if there's snow with the sun reflection, it'll be good just to put on my face, so on and so forth, but prevent myself from getting sunburn. And then, of course, I just have a small little first aid kit put together here. It has like a couple large size bandages, a few finger size bandages, a few little odds and ends thrown in. This is pre-tape. Great for holding bandages in place, but it's super lightweight. Um, I do have some patch kits and stuff thrown in there as well with a little bit of super glue so I can patch up my pad, um, patch up a jacket, whatever it is. Just a couple small little pieces. Nothing crazy, but I have it in case I do need it. You know, I like to keep my first aid kit nice and simple, nice and streamlined, but definitely a few items in there where if I run into an issue, I got myself covered. If I run into an issue that requires anything more than this right here, it's better to just get myself off the trail, visit a doctor, and get the help that I need. All right, and now let's move on to electronics. This is definitely a big one here. Obviously, you guys know I'm going to be filming the whole trip. Now, I have my GoPro in hand right now. I am not counting that against my base weight because that will be sitting in the front pouch with me, and therefore it will be on my person. Um but I will be primarily filming with my GoPro. I will also be carrying my cell phone, Samsung Galaxy. Uh, that will also be sitting in that front pouch, so I won't count it against my base weight, 
but that'll be good for uploading photos as well as connecting everything to my GoPro uh, and transmitting all the videos from there. For the electronics that I will actually be carrying on my backpack, um, I of course have to count them against my base weight and here they go. Coming on down, I do have the Anchor battery. It's like 20,000 milliamps. It weighs 12 ounces, which I know is kind of heavy. Might be a little bit overkill, but obviously I have quite a few electronics to charge. I need to keep them in order. Uh, I have a dual pronged uh, wall charger for staying in hostels, hotels, whatever it is. It's a pretty fast charger, really nice and simple. There you go. I have that quick key connector for the SD card for connecting um, to my phone to transfer videos and pictures from my GoPro sitting there. Charger cables, I have a simple charger splicer. So this thing is great because it has pretty much all the necessary charger heads that I need. Um, and pretty much if I wanted to, I can get away with this just one cable all by itself. But I have the dual head charger. I am bringing a tiny, tiny extra micro USB cable just so I'm able to also charge the anchor battery pack at the same time. At the same time, I'm charging all my other devices. Now, that will all be stored in this op sack here, fully waterproof. I carry a few extra AAAs for my headlamp just in case, a pair of headphones, uh, some uh, some of those gel packets that absorb moisture, I will be throwing in some earplugs. And then, of course, the items that actually need to get charged. Obviously, besides my GoPro, besides my cell phone, I have a couple other things to get charged. Some of these things will get charged almost every day, some of them once a week, some of them once every other week, so on and so forth. So first and foremost, my Petzl Tika, it does have the rechargeable battery sitting inside there. Using it a couple hours each night, I can go about two weeks before I have to recharge that at minimum. Sometimes I can stretch out to three weeks if I'm not really using it too much. To the right here, this is the Garmin InReach Explorer. I do have a separate review on this as well. You can take a look in the right corner. This thing weighs about seven, seven and a half ounces. This is how I'll be keeping, uh, this is how my family and friends can keep track of my hike as well as how I can message in dead areas, so on and so forth. Now, certainly this might be overkill for the Appalachian Trail, but I am also looking at future through hikes on future trails, so I wanted something for the long term. Now, for those of you who know me, I do like to uh, listen to some music while I'm out on my hike, as well as while I'm inside my tent, maybe on zero days. I like to keep myself entertained. It can get kind of boring. So I do have my iPod sitting here with some good music. I also have a few movies downloaded on there as well. Like I said, on a zero day, keep myself entertained. Sitting next to it over here, I do have a buck Buckshot Bluetooth speaker. Uh, really good sound, pretty nice and loud. This is dual purpose entertainment during bear season. It also is nice, pretty nice and loud to help keep the bears at bay. So not too bad. Obviously, I try to keep it nice and simple. I think I'm saving definitely a ton of weight in regards to just the charger cables alone, how I can keep it so simple with just the splicer and that little itty bitty uh, USB cable. Uh, so definitely I'm getting some pretty decent uh, ounce savings right there. Obviously, I have to keep devices charged. Thankfully, my headlamp does also run off of AAA headlamps, so if I decide to switch over, I can. It does give me that flexibility. And then some miscellaneous items, a few little more odds and ends. To the right side there, I do have the Z-Pax bear bag uh, with some Z-Line as well. Simple little climbing carabiner attached to the end. I have a tiny little stuff sack to drop some pebbles in to make it easier to toss over. Really nice and simple. The whole combination is pretty nice and lightweight. I'll put that weight below, of course. If I can put it back on and keep it nice and clean, you know, keep it nice and simple the way I want it to be. Uh, up top there, the uh, Osprey rain cover for my backpack coming in at only three ounces. I like to go with the rain cover. I do have things in Ultra Seal stuff sacks to give it that uh, second layer protection, but I still like the rain cover keep my pack as dry as possible and also once if my backpack were to absorb water it will get heavier and I don't want that to happen. Down below here I do have my custom made gear strap. Uh, this thing is great to number one hang my uh, gravity filter if there's no branch around to hang it off conveniently enough. It's also great to hang my pack up off the ground so I'm not breaking my back or if there's snow or, or if there's mud on the ground so on and so forth. Really nice, convenient, lots of options with it. It's only a couple ounces. 
Now this guy down below here, this is a little keychain that I got from work and a little baby carabiner. So with the way my tent is set up with the trekking poles on the side, if there's dirt on the ground or in areas where the chipmunks and squirrels are going crazy, I this enables me to hang my backpack up off the ground but still outside my tent. It's kind of hung up on my trekking pole. I'll show you guys um, on a night on my through hike how that's all set up. But really convenient, keeps the rodents away from my backpack, gets my pack up off the ground, out of the dirt as well. Over here, simple little fire kit, box of matches, a couple lighters. I have some extra string in there, uh, clothesline, shoestring, whatever the case may be. And then I simply have here just a quick um, safety blanket, one of those Mylar reflective safety blankets. If there's a cold night, uh, certainly I can throw that down. Uh, on the underneath certainly I can throw this down on the floor of the shelter and use this as underneath my uh, sleeping pad instead of my dirty footprint to my tent kind of thing so on and so forth something that's nice and lightweight but something that's really nice and versatile as well of course the famed Z seat the famed Z seat you see almost every single through hiker with this two ounces foam sit pad uh, you can fan the fire with it something that's so simple so lightweight so durable I love it. It's always going to come with me. I hope I keep this thing forever. You know, they always say to bring some good sun sun protection with you, so I got a pair of sunglasses. Nothing more to really say about that. Nemo backpacking wallet, a really lightweight, thin thin wallet. Um, en enables me to carry enough of what I need without carrying too much, and obviously incredibly thin, lightweight. Takes up little to no room in my backpack. I will be bringing the AT AWOL guidebook with me. This is the brand new 2018 northbound version. One thing that I will do is probably cut this into sections. Um, obviously, all my family and everything, it lives up here in New Jersey. So what I'll probably do is cut off to the section at the Delaware Water Gap. And then once I get up here, visit my family for a few days, I'll pick up that part of the book and take that the rest of the way with me. It'll be a good way to save the weight but still carry the guidebook. Uh, I want to be able to make notes and stuff inside the guidebook, so I do want to actually bring it with me, that kind of thing. And, of course, once I get down to Amicalola, I'll get my badge, so on and so forth. And just got a little tiny Ziploc behind here to hold it in just to keep it nice and dry going through the weather. And these are the, just the last few little bit of items that I'll be carrying on my person. So I won't be counting these against my base weight, but of course I want to make sure I cover them in my video. Simple little uh, handkerchief rag, kind of snot rag. Uh, that's primarily what I'm going to be using it for, but an extra towel just in case I need it. My Benchmade mini griptilian pocket knife. I always take that thing with me. I know I probably am never going to use it. I never am going to need it, so on and so forth, out on my through hike, but I'd just love to bring it with me. Leatherman Squirt PS4 multi-tool. Don't need to say much more about that. Really popular multi-tool amongst through hikers. Has just all the right amount of tools and is nice and lightweight. Simple little safety whistle right down below there. Always got to make sure you carry your whistle with you. I have my Citizen Echo Drive watch coming with me, of course. I love this watch. Powered by the sun. Never needs a battery. Uh, I just love the styling of it. Super durable. So on and so forth. Got my chapstick. Always got to have my chapstick. I'll probably have a panic attack if I ever lose, lose my chapstick. In my first aid kit, I do have a little bit extra just in case. I got a small little pen sitting there. Uh, I'm just going to keep that in my pocket. So if I come across something cool or some, come some cool little experience that I want to make note of, I can take that pen out, notch it down in my guidebook so I can remember at a later time. And then, of course, I got to keep a lighter with me. I got to keep my Bic with me so I can light my stove, so on and so forth. Always keep a source of fire on your person, on your in your pocket, especially in the cold seasons to keep that, uh, keep that fluid nice and warm. So, okay, guys, that's going to cover just the basic equipment that I'm going to be carrying with me. Obviously, I need to make sure that I have all my bases covered, but I'm still maintaining something that is very nice and lightweight, very nice and comfortable for me personally. Uh, and gets the job done as far as safety goes, as far as comfort goes, cleanliness, the whole nine yards, does the job for me. So from there, last thing to do is move ahead over on into clothes and footwear. Let's go ahead and get it done. So, okay, guys, why don't we actually start down below here with the clothes that I plan on wearing uh, during the day while I hike. So firstly, we'll start with the T-shirt. That is the Outdoor Research Echo Duo. Comes in at only 2.8 ounces, incredibly lightweight, 
very, very breathable, very, very comfortable. A nice little upgrade from my previous uh, quick dry t-shirt. I'll be pairing that with the Solomon Cairn running shorts. They do have liners on the inside. Only three and a half ounces. Very nice and lightweight, very breathable, quick drying, so on and so forth. Now, certainly if the temperatures are a little bit chilly for just the uh, t-shirt and shorts, I do have some options available to me. To the left, that is the REI Spree quarter zip long sleeve shirt. Quick drying. I love the quarter zip, so at least I can, you know, get some air in there if I warm up a little bit too much. Uh, long sleeve, it does have the thumb holes, which I really, really like. If it's a little bit chilled, it's nice so it can protect the back of my hands kind of thing. Uh, and then, of course, to the right, I do have the Odlo base layers. Now, they're base layers, but they're very stretchy and kind of compressive. Um, now, even though they are a compressive kind of base layer, they're also very forgiving. So I have no loss of mobility. I primarily use them just as hiking tights or runner's tights. They are very comfortable, very breathable. Help keep me dry, of course, during the colder weather, but help keep me a little bit warmer than I otherwise would be. The shoes of choice will be the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5. Uh, really nice and breathable, very, very comfortable. Ultra is really taking over the market as far as long distance backpackers go. I will be pairing that with uh, some lightweight trail running gaiters. They are very breathable, very nice and stretchy, very comfortable. Will shed the water and the snow fairly well, but primarily there to keep the dirt and debris out. And of course, I got to protect my feet. I will be going with hiking socks and uh, liners included. I decided to revert back to the liners just because it made my feet feel a little bit more comfortable. To the left are the liners, the Cool Mesh 2 socks. I really love them. They're very breathable, extremely comfortable, and definitely help prevent against blisters. Uh, I hike enough where I shouldn't have any issues, but in my experience, they definitely help for a long day as well. To the right is a pair of darn tough quarter length socks. Uh, I know going with Alchers, the preferred sock is the Injinji Toe Socks, but they're just not comfortable for me. I don't like them very much. Just not for me. I'm going to stick with the tried and true darn tough quarter length socks for me. Now, I'm not going to carry a whole lot of extra hiking clothes with me, especially during the colder months, because I am carrying enough uh, camp clothes to help keep me warm as it is. But I will be carrying an extra pair of sock liners and an extra pair of hiking socks, Always a good idea to carry that extra pair to help take care of your feet. You know, if your clothes are dirty, your clothes are wet, so on and so forth. If you have a good pair of dry socks, good pair of dry clothes to get into when you sleep, all the better for it. One more thing that I'll be primarily wearing during the day is a buff. Um, so the one down below will be primarily used as a face shield during the cold weather, some of the rain, some of the wind, so on and so forth. The buffs are great to use as a lightweight face shield. They're very breathable, so they don't restrict your breathing. But when you exhale, it helps warm everything up and help keep your face warm. The one on top there will go up on top of my head. That's the classic buff that you've seen me wear for a couple years now. I love that thing, and hopefully it comes all the way to Maine with me. So before we go ahead and get on to my camp clothes, let's cover my rain gear real quick. Uh, to the left is going to be the Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket. Certainly I could have opted for something with a little bit more ventilation, but I figured it's going to be on my backpack 90% of the time. I'd rather keep it as lightweight as possible uh, to have some kind of rain coverage only when I need it uh, than to go with something heavier uh, to where I'm really not going to wear it all that often just because I want some more ventilation. To the right there, I have the Helium rain pants to go with it. Really nice and lightweight at only 5.4 ounces. Uh, the combination between the two are just incredibly lightweight. Those will most likely come with me from Georgia to Maine uh, unless I decide to switch things up along the way. And now camp clothes. Camp clothes is really where you got to do your homework. This is where, really where you're uh, going to make it or break it. You can have some really, really chilly nights going through the Smokies, especially at those high elevations. So having a good layering system to help keep you warm help keep you dry, uh, especially if you have to hike during a cold, wet day. It can really just help bring you some uh, good mental comfort uh, and obviously help keep you warm, most importantly. So starting down below here, what I'll primarily be sleeping in uh, to, your, to your left is going to be the Smartwool 150-gram ultralight base layer shirt, the long sleeve. Uh, that is really nice and lightweight, only 6 ounces you know, certainly I could have opted for the mid-weight layer, but 
you know what? A base layer's main intended purpose is supposed to be breathable, not really insulating. Uh, so I decided to opt for uh, saving the weight and going with something uh, nice and lightweight as I did. To the right, you do have the matching pants to go with it. 150 gram Smart World base layer pants uh, coming in at only 5 ounces. Really nice and lightweight. Definitely get the job done for me. In the middle right there, ex officio boxer briefs. Uh, those would be great to just wear at camp. Whether it be a cool, uh, a little bit of a warmer night, I can just wear those inside of my sleeping bag. Or certainly I can wear those underneath my rain pants if we have to stop in town and I'm waiting for my laundry to be done. Um, you know, certainly a multitude of different options. Only three and a half ounces. Can't go wrong from there. And then the layer to put on top of that base layer, uh, my primary insulating layer. This is something that I've really worked on. To the left there is the Patagonia Nano Air Light Hybrid, one of my favorite pieces of equipment. It's insulated along your core, along the top of your arms, where you release a lot of body heat. But it's vented uh, underneath your arms and along the back, where you tend to perspire a little bit more. So really nice comb combination of uh, warmth as well as breathability. Now that Patagonia jacket will also serve as a really good daytime jacket. If it's a little bit chilled and I need something a little bit more, again, just really good how it's uh, insulated along your core and then vented out the back. Uh, just has worked really, really well for me thus far. Really looking forward to taking that on the trail. And then, of course, to the right, you have the REI Fleece Teton 100 Pants. Pretty nice and lightweight at 10 ounces, but they are incredibly warm. They are a more trim cut, so it is something to be aware of if you're looking at fleece pants yourself. Uh, but they're trim cut for a reason, so there's no wasted space. So this combination on top of my base layers has proven to really keep me warm in some pretty tough weather. But I got one more thing to touch on to add that extra protection. Obviously, you got to bring a puffy. The Puffy is always recommended to bring with you. It is such a lifesaver. This is the Arcteryx Cerium LT hoodie. It comes in at 10.1 ounces. It is an 850 fill down hoodie. Really nice and lightweight. Very compressible as well. But it is so incredibly warm. I rarely wear this thing out in public just because it is so warm. But it's there for backpacking. When I know the weather's going to be cold, I know that I need some extra protection. Really, really love this piece of gear. Uh, can't say enough about Arcteryx, obviously, they're a very high-end item, you're paying for what you get. Of course, you gotta keep the toes warm, toes are always some of the toughest things to keep warm, but I think I've done pretty well for myself. Up top there, you have the REI Merino wool liners, uh, really good for that breathable layer, good for during the summer as a breathable layer, but good for almost like a base layer around your feet for during the cold weather seasons, because then right down below that, you have the Smart Wool Trekker Weight. Uh, merino wool socks there, really nice and thick. Uh, they're only about three and a half ounces, if I remember correctly, 3.8 ounces, but they're incredibly warm. Uh, putting the liners underneath and then putting those over top has done really well for me. It's definitely a great combination. And then, of course, to finish it all off, you got to bring the hats and gloves with you. Up top there, the uh, Mountain Hardware Fleece Beanie, only 0.8 ounces. Really nice and lightweight, but obviously fleece is a really, really good insulator. It is still very breathable, so a good option to wear during the day if it's a little bit chilled as well. Down below, I have gloves by this company called Cyrus or Cirrus. I can never remember how to pronounce it. They are actually waterproof gloves, so they're still very nice and lightweight. I don't lose any dexterity, but it's great to wear if there's a cold day of rain. Uh, some snow or freezing rain with my hands out in front holding my trekking poles. They won't get soaked. They won't get chilled to the bone. So yeah, guys, this is it. This is the gear that's going to get me from Georgia to Maine. Now, understandably, there are going to be some major changes being done with my clothing system, especially as the seasons change over, as well as my sleeping bag will be getting changed out as the seasons change over. But primarily, everything on the left side, that gear right there, will remain the same. Um, understandably, some things always get changed out along the way. They get replaced. But this is what I will be starting with on my upcoming through hike. Obviously, I've gone on a lot of hikes with this equipment. I know it upside down, inside and out. But you can never prepare for the unexpected. Um, I can simply just roll with the punches, keep moving forward one step at a time, hike my hike, and I'll get to Katahdin without a problem. Now, certainly, let's talk base weight. 
Now, right now, I do have a number of items in here that will be on my person, of course. So they will be not counted in my base weight. My base weight overall, uh, from my calculation, is sitting at about 17 pounds, 5 ounces. Now, I could be off by a few ounces here or there. Um, I def I've you know switched some things up with my toiletries as well as with my first aid a little bit over the last few days. So I haven't really had the opportunity to reweigh that and take that into consideration. So that might be where those few ounces are. And of course, take into consideration the guidebook as well. You know, so sitting around 17 and a half pounds or so for my winter cold gear base weight, I am very, very happy with that. That is not too shabby at all to be under, under that 20 pound threshold, to be under that 18 pound threshold, which means with my water and also my food, for three or four days, I should hover right around that 28 to 30 pound mark. So really, really happy with that. That means my summer weight is going to be nice and lightweight when I should be at my strongest as well. I am super excited. Oh my gosh, I only have a few days left to go. Is this really happening? Yes, it is. Keep it together, Bob. Keep it together. So certainly if you guys have any questions about these uh, items that you see before you, about any of the pieces of equipment, Leave it in the comments down below. You know I will get around to answering those questions as soon as I possibly can. Um, I've done a lot of work on this. I'm very proud of it. It's what works well for me. Obviously, there's some things in here that some people might dispute. Some people might say, why are you bringing this? Why are you bringing that? But it's what works well for me. It's something that I have confidence in. I have trust in. And this is the way that I'm going to go. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe down below to keep up to date with all my videos, including my Appalachian Trail through hike, which is right around the corner. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that share button. Again, leave me a comment or a question down below. I always do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. This is going to be an amazing adventure. I cannot wait. I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Pleasure as always. Baba Ganoush out.